Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we'll be combining two of my favorite things, fitness and math. We're going to use a dumbbell and the bicep curl to demonstrate how integration is applied to physical scenarios and the overall feeling of applying integration, if that makes sense. So we learn of integration as being the opposite of differentiation, but that idea does not really capture how it's used in application. The way I think of the applications of integration is that I have this continuously varying value of some type, and I wanna know the overall contribution of that changing value over some amount of something. I don't think that was helpful to anyone, but you'll see what I mean. So I have this 25 pound dumbbell here. Now if I curl the dumbbell, my bicep is applying torque in order to lift the dumbbell. But that torque is not constant because when my arm is just hanging here, my bicep is applying little to no torque right now. But as I start the rep, that torque is going to increase and it's going to hit its peak at this perpendicular angle because I'm applying torque in the directly opposite direction as the force of gravity. And as I continue the rep, it's going to fall off again. So the torque being applied is varying continuously throughout the rep and it's varying with respect to the angle formed by my forearm and my upper arm. So we'll say the starting position is the angle zero, radians or degrees, and we'll say that the final position of the rep is 135 degrees or three pi over four radians. Now the radius of the circle being traced by the motion is also involved in torque, but to simplify things, we'll just say that my forearm is exactly one foot long. So how can we model the torque being applied? Well, remember, it's at its minimum at the bottom, angle zero, hits its peak at a right angle or pi over two radians and then falls off again. So which trig function does that? The sine function. Sine is zero at an angle of zero, hits one at 90 degrees and then falls off from there. So we have a weight of 25 pounds. My forearm, we're pretending is one foot long. So the function that tells us the torque being applied with respect to that angle is given by this. The torque with respect to theta is given by 25 times the sine of theta. A very simple function, but this is modeling the torque being applied over the course of the rep. Now the torque is just that force being applied at a particular point. If I want to talk about the torque being done over the course of the rep, that's work in the rotational sense. But the thing is, the torque is varying throughout that angle range of zero to three pi over four. So I can't just multiply my torque by that total angle because the torque is changing throughout the course of the rep. So what can we do? Well, we can divide that zero to three pi over four rep range into some sub intervals and evaluate the torque at those points. Then evaluate the work at those points and add them all up. That's called a Riemann sum and it's going to approximate the total work done over the course of the rep. So here is the starting position and the ending position. This angle is three pi over four radians. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this into a few sections so we can cut it in half and we can cut the halves in half. Now this angle is three pi over eight. This angle is three pi over 16. This angle is nine pi over 16. So I've cut the rep range into four pieces. So I can evaluate the torque at each of these pieces, then evaluate the work being done from here to here, then here to here, then here to here, and then add them all up. And that's gonna be an approximation of the total work done by the bicep over the course of the rep. The reason why it's an approximation is because this torque is varying continuously. I can't just cut it up into a finite number of pieces and pick these points and expect it to be the exact work done. This torque is varying continuously. So that's why it's an approximation. So here's the result of that approximation. Remember, we divided the total rep range into intervals of length three pi over 16 radians. So we're gonna find the torque at angle zero and apply that over three pi over 16 radians. Then we find the torque at three pi over 16 radians and apply that over 
an angle length of three pi over 16 radians. Then we find the torque at three pi over eight radians, apply that over three pi over 16 radians. And the torque at nine pi over 16 radians and apply that over the angle range of three pi over 16 radians. And this comes out to be roughly 21.78, and this is foot pounds. So that's the work done by the bicep when you approximate by dividing the rep range into four intervals, each of length three pi over 16 radians. Now, how will we get a more accurate approximation? Well, the torque is varying continuously. So the more intervals we break this rep range up into evaluating the torque at more points and finding the approximation of the work done with more intervals is going to be a better approximation. We just divided the rep into four intervals of angles. So let's try dividing it into eight intervals of angles and approximate work that way. So here are the angles we get when we divide that full rep range from zero to three pi over four radians into eight intervals of angles. We have three pi over 32, three pi over 16, nine pi over 32, three pi over eight, 15 pi over 32, nine pi over 16, 21 pi over 16, and three pi over four. So by taking a Riemann sum over more intervals, we're gonna have a better approximation. So the first thing we do is evaluate the torque at the angle zero. Well, that's just gonna be zero because the sign of zero is zero. So I'm gonna leave that term off. Now we'll evaluate the torque at three pi over 32. And we're applying that over an angle of length three pi over 32. Now next, we're gonna evaluate the torque at three pi over 16. And we're gonna apply that torque over this interval. And that interval is again of length three pi over 32. All of the intervals are the same length. We've equally divided the rep range into eight pieces. So we're gonna continue along this sum. We're gonna keep evaluating the torque at these points and then applying that over the interval, the angle interval of length three pi over 32. So this is gonna come out to be roughly 27.15 foot pounds of work being done over the course of the rep by the bicep. So to recap, the first thing we did is we approximated the work done by the bicep over the course of the rep by dividing the rep into four sub intervals, evaluating the torque at those points and adding up the works done over those intervals. We got a better approximation by dividing it into more intervals. So the integral represents the ultimate final limit of that process. With more intervals, we have a better approximation. The integral in a sense represents dividing the rep into infinitely many intervals and evaluating at all of those infinitely many points and then adding up all of the products of the torque at that point over the interval length. Now that's a little janky to say because our intervals are length and infinitesimal. Best not to question these things right now. The point is the exact work done by the bicep over the course of the entire rep is given by the integral of our torque function from zero to three pi over four radians. This is what I meant earlier. By applying integration, we want to know the total contribution of this continuously changing value to some big total. This is the torque and we want to know its contribution over the entire rep range to the work. And that is the integral of the torque function. And this is a simple integral to compute. We can take this 25 out. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we're left with this. And this is 25 times root two over two plus one. This is the exact work done by the bicep over the entire rep. And this is approximately equal to 42.678 foot pounds. So that is the total work done by the bicep over the course of the entire rep. So to summarize the overall feeling of applying integration or the way to know that integration is going to help you solve a problem or be involved in some concept 
is that it's going to involve some continuously changing value and you're interested in the total contribution of that value over some interval if that makes sense so in our example the continuously changing value is the torque and it's being applied over that whole angle the rep range torque is just the force at a point the work is the total contribution of the torque of all of those points over the course of the entire rep but anyways i hope this helps someone uh, that's gonna have to do it for this one if you like the video be sure to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one